Hey guys, how are you all? My name is Atif and a very warm welcome to all of you. Today we will be talking about Western Ghats primarily because of two reasons. First, the recent landslide in Wayanad where more than 400 people lost their lives. And second, this area is ecologically very diverse. There are a lot of species of plants and animals. That is why this area is very important for us and we need to save it. So let us start with the basic geography of the region. This area runs along the western coast of India, starting from Gujarat and ends in Tamil Nadu, right at the end, at the southernmost end of India. It includes the states of Gujarat, Goa, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Kerala. So, total of six states with a total distance of 1600 kilometers. And this is not a continuous chain, almost, you can see the almost continuous. There are some gaps present as well, like the Palghat gap, Senkota gap. These are some gaps present in the Western Ghats. One important thing about the Western Ghats, the Nilgiris is the point where Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats meet. And here you found, you will find a mountain peak named Anai Mudi, which is the highest peak in the Western Ghats. The height of Western Ghats is lowest in the northern part and it increases as you move southwards. So the highest peaks will be in the south and the height will be less in the northern part. Now, let's go to the flora and fauna of the region. This area is, has very diverse flora and fauna, having more than 5000 flowering species. This point is very important. It has 2200 endemic species. Remember the point 2200 endemic species and it accounts for more than 20% of the flowering plants in India as well. Talking about the animals, it has mammals, birds, reptiles and amphibians as well. Now, this area is considered as a biodiversity hotspot. Why? In India, there are a total of four biodiversity hotspots, Himalayas, Indo-Burma border, Sunda lands and the Western Ghats. Now, what is the criteria to be in the hotspot? There are two criteria. Number one, the region contains at least 1500 endemic vascular plants and that is why I focused here on 2253. So, it qualifies for this criteria and this region has already lost more than 70% of its original natural vegetation. And that is also happening in this region. So, this is considered as a biodiversity hotspot. These are some of the reasons to be in the hotspot. Now, that is why, because of all the diversity we find in this region, this is the reason why we should conserve this area. What are the main threats to the area? First of all, human settlements. As the population is increasing, the people are shifting from cities and other areas towards the guards in the forests, which is causing problems to the area, putting undue pressure on the resources as well as even leading to human-animal conflict. Number two is the agrochemical pollution. Because of the increasing population, the people are shifting towards the areas and doing the agricultural practices, which would include use of insecticides, pesticides and many other harmful compounds that is not good for the western guards. Number three is the mining activity, which is the most damaging activity for western guards as this region is very much rich in a lot of minerals. So there is very heavy mining going on in this region, which results in making the slopes unstable and eventually causing landslides that recently happened like the Wayanard. And finally, the climate change that always plays its role, heavy rains and other stuff that causes a lot of problems. Now, there is a need to conserve this region. Has the government taken any steps? Yes, there are a lot of steps taken by the government and a lot of committees set up and out of them, we have two very important committees, the Gadgil committee and the Kasturi Rangan. First of all, we will start with the Gadgil report. When we found out there are some very important points in this report, the first is the entire hill region was recognized as eco-sensitive zone. Entire hill as the eco-sensitive zone. That means the entire 1600 kilometers were recognized as eco-sensitive zones, number one. Number two, there was a complete ban on pesticides and any of the uh, genetically modified crops. Number two, then you have ban on mining. As I told you, mining has been a major threat to the region. 
complete ban on mining and finally an advisory and authority to set up to look for the uh, proper uh, conservation of western guards now the problem is that if you look at all these steps these are very rigid and it is very difficult to follow if you name entire area as the eco sensitive zone you completely ban the mining and other agricultural activities it is very difficult to do the developmental activities just imagine that you cannot do mining and you cannot extract the necessary that you need the minerals for day to day life how are you thinking of getting developed so this was very strict so after that there was another committee set up under kasturi rangan and it gave its reports and it was a bit more of a sustainable report where the first step was sensit there was to there was a classification of the area between the natural landscape and the cultural landscape the natural landscape was the one that was a sensitive zone and it was only 37% so there is another 63% left for other activities this is very important it was not as rigid as gadgil report where it was the entire area was covered as a sensitive zone here only 37% of the area was considered as the sensitive zone that's number 1 number 2 is the mining mining was banned in only this region the natural landscape that is the sensitive zone in rest of the areas you can do mining well prob probably it was not like doing uh, ruthless mining you have to do it in a proper way but it was allowed in only cultural landscapes and not in natural landscapes that help will help in the further development of the region and finally he said that there should be strengthening of the existing mechanisms and not the uh, uh, formation of the other mechanisms and we should only strengthen the existing mechanism so these were some of the points of the kasturi rangan report now this is a question from 2016 upsc csc prelims gadgil committee report and the kasturi rangan report which are associated with so you should be able to answer these simple questions that is all from us today this was a very simple topic for today and if you still have any questions you can ask me in the comments i'll be more than happy to answer you thank you very much do like share and subscribe goodbye